So I'm leaving Livernois Motorsports. This place is pretty cool. They do modifications to all kinds of late model cars. And they do a lot of work with the 27s and the 35s. So uh, check it out and let me know what you think. Thanks a lot. All right, Sean here. I'm here with Scott. Hey, uh, how you guys, you guys doing today? We're here in, uh, we're at Livernois Motorsports. Correct. Now, what's the official name of this place? Livernois Motorsports and Engineering. Okay, cool. So you guys do like engine blocks for the 27 and 35? Yes. 5 -0 or? Oh yeah. yeah. So you guys basically got engine blocks for all F-150s? F-150, pretty much anything domestic, Chrysler, GM, uh, we got it. We get wow, it. you do Chrysler too? Absolutely. Alright, cool. Because my wife wanted to get a Jeep. Yep. I think it's probably like the V6 one. You probably can't do a whole lot there, but... Yeah, you'd be surprised. Quite a bit of options. So. Alright. All right, cool. So show me some of the cars that we're allowed to look at because we can't look at customer cars. Correct. So, so uh, what can we look at? We can look at our shop cars, which we've got to go actually over to the farthest corner of the shop here. Okay. And we'll get to those guys. So are these the shop cars? Actually, our shop car here. This is the shop car here? Yep. This is actually Dodge Hellcat 2016. Oh, wow. So you were actually able to get more power out of this? A lot more power. A lot more power. Yes. The car right now on drag radios, the way that it sits, has been 980 at 143 mile an hour. Wow. On slicks with front runners, it picked up a tent that went 970. Wow, so what did you do to it? Uh, we've got a lower pulley on it, upper pulley on it. Actually, has still a factory airbox on it. Uh, it's got upgraded injectors along with our tuning capabilities. Okay, so not too crazy, you no. know, not too crazy at all. No, it, uh, and that's oh, something it is does that have headers on it, but factory exhaust still, too. Is that something you can do remotely, or we're working on that right now? Okay, so we're trying to. This is actually a pretty complex setup but we are trying to get it to where we can do a remote tune on it. We do have some regular tunes that we can put in the Hellcat, so. Wow. If you had to pick, do you, what power plant do you think is stronger, the Chevy or the Dodge? They're both pretty equally good. Uh, pretty we've equal. been very fast with both of them. Uh, we've actually done some upgrades on some of the engines to where they live longer, make more power, right. more reliable, uh, and just they're fun, awesome cars to drive. You know, in the Hellcat, Again, that's still a factory stock engine in that car. We right, not right. Taking a valve cover off of it, and it's probably making roughly almost a thousand crank horsepower. Right. So that's roughly a thousand. How much at how much at the wheels? Roughly around eight hundred. About eight hundred at the wheels, and, and it's pretty much safe. It's no, yes. there's no reliability issues, no throwing rods or nothing like that. Nope. No, we've uh, we're in the process right now of actually building an engine for it to make it more reliable and right, sure right. that it's not going to have a problem, but. We've made many passes with the car. It's street driven. Matter of fact, with the Telegraph Cruise, I had it out personally, driving the car around, taking customers for rides, and just having a grand time with the car. Wow, that's awesome. All right, so don't you guys have an F-150 here? Or we, yes, we do. Where's that at? Is it out? Or? It is actually out front. Can we take a look at that? Sure. All right, so here's the shop F-150. Unfortunately, it is a bit dirty right now. The gentleman who drives this truck does live kind of out in the country, down dirt road, so. Uh, but on this one here, we did a lowering kit on it. This was kind of our test truck, so we could develop our cold air kit along with the tune for. Now, when you say develop the cold air kit, I noticed, uh, I never heard of the brand that you carry, I forget the name, mm -hmm. what's it called? Windstorm. Windstorm. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean when you say you develop it? We actually develop our products right here in house. So oh, wow. Our cold air kits, our exhaust kits, our fuel pumps, the high-pressure fuel pumps for these things, all that is developed in-house by Livernoy Motorsports and Engineering, hence the engineering part. So you actually went in and figured out the best route for that for that cold air intake? Absolutely. So you guys basically make the cold air intake here? Mm -hmm. or, wow, that's pretty cool. So can you show that intake, or is it locked? It's locked right oh, now. Okay, I have fine. to find it. Just got the keys and find it, but... Uh, now, with just the intake alone, is there any performance gains? Oh, yeah. Just absolutely. from adding just the intake? Just the intake? Well, if you had just the intake alone, you may not see a whole lot of gain. You'll see a little bit, but where you really gain is the intake and the tune. Right, right. So, uh, when we actually introduce a lot more air into the engine, well, you've got to be able to make sure that all of your other stuff is going to coincide with that, too. Now, you, you obviously, you got the intake for all three engines but they're are they are they the same intake for all three engines the two seven and three five yes 
the Raptor 3.5 is a little bit different. The Raptor, but the 5.0 is not a big. The 5.0 is different compared to the 2.7 and 3.5, yes. So there is basically three different cold air intakes, for, you know, one being for the 2.7 and 3.5, one for the Raptor, and one for the 5.0. So you guys took the time to really find the perfect intake for each engine. Yes. Because I know a lot of them, they're like, they fit all the F-150s. Yep. But you guys took the time to figure out which fits each engine application. Absolutely. So when you do the when you do the intake, you go with a uh, you go with the tune basically in the intake setup yes. all in one. You can do that remote. Mm -hmm. Basically yep. send out the tune. Yeah, those we can do absolutely remotely, and everything's good to go on those. So. Thank you. What's up, fellas? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. So you guys, you guys obviously got a dyno. How much is a dyno run just to see? Uh, if you want to make just a baseline power pulls on a two-wheel drive vehicle, it's roughly about 180 bucks. 180 bucks. Yep. If you've got an all-wheel drive vehicle and we need to set up on the all-wheel drive dyno, dyno, uh, it basically bumps up to about 100, 100 bucks more. It's about 280. Okay. Wow. So, and we can dyno pretty much anything, any wheelbase, um, all-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, whatever the case may be. Wow, that's awesome. So wait, can you show me those engines? The, the yeah, the absolutely. Blocks? We got to yeah. go back up front. On a normal. 3.5, this area is all just wide open. Oh, wow. So what we do is we put this basically brace, what we would call a cylinder brace, okay. in here, which basically connects your cylinder to the actual block. Because from the factory, this is not in here. Okay. And you can see how thick that is. And that's going to add a lot more rigidity. Yes. It makes the block stronger. It gives it strength. You have less deflection or torque of the block. And this is all one piece from each cylinder? Yep. Wow. Yep, that is all one piece, so it's not like it's actually individual pieces. Okay. And this is our cutaway so you can actually see what we did. You can see from the factory that this is open. Okay. And it goes open all the way up to here. So there's a little bit of a shelf, but you machine that shelf in there? This is actually all put in by us, this whole piece that you see here. Uh huh. So is, just, is it just press fit, basically? I mean, yeah. once you put the head on there, mm -hmm. that ain't gonna... We actually have a video of how this is done on our, on our YouTube. Oh, okay. So I'll put the link in the description. Yeah, it's a lengthy process, but, you know, whenever you're gonna add a lot of power to an EcoBoost, whether it's an F-150, a show, or, you know, you're putting one of these blocks and who knows what, and you wanna go racing, right. go out in the desert, whatever it is, you gotta have this. Right. To make sure it's gonna have that power. Now, what about the pistons? Is that carry over? Is that upgraded? This is actually an upgraded piston for this. You can see it's coated. This is a piston that we actually sell. So you've got your coating here on the skirt, and then you've got your coating up here on the top. And this actually, for thermal reasons, is on here. What kind this, of coating is that on top? This is actually a special high temp coating. It acts as a barrier or a okay. heat absorber. So under boost, and you have a lot of cylinder pressure, a lot of heat. This actually will help transfer that all the way around the piston. Wow. So, okay. On our skirting, this actually acts as basically a lubricant, so you're not getting the scuff of raw metal to the actual piston wall. So not only does it make more power, it's just more longevity in general. Yes, reliability. Because it's got that. Yeah, we want to make sure whatever we build is going to, number one, make power. It's also going to be reliable. Now this is a 3.5, right? This is a 3.5 block, yes. And that's all cast right. aluminum. Mm -hmm. And uh, crank is carryover? Yes. Crank's pretty solid. Crank, nice. crank is so. solid on those things. Connecting rod solid? Mm -hmm. So, connecting rod, so basically you're getting the upgraded block, yep. upgraded pistons, carry over, connect. Now, with the Raptor, how much is different internally with the Raptor? Obviously it makes more power, but is it just like better turbos and better tune, or do they actually go inside of that motor? Uh, the, with the Raptor engine, don't quote me for sure, but I do believe they have some upgraded some cam upgraded shafts. Cam shafts. A little bit different timing, so it's not a whole lot different compared to a regular 3.5, but there's right. some a little bit different right. parts completed in the Raptor. But needless to say, the way the 3.5 is stock, you can add some, some more power oh, and still be safe. Mm -hmm. Quite a bit more power and still Quite be safe. Yeah. No. Right, right. So for sure, I'm ordering an 18. And I don't really want to do nothing to the 15 that I got because mm -hmm. I wanted to get the new truck. Yeah. But the best one to get for as far as like the most I can do with mods is a 35. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So yeah, that's the one I'm going to order. And I'll probably... What do you think you can get just from the intake, exhaust, and that tuner for the 35? Right now on platforms, I want to say we're picking up 100 and 
torque some point. 120 ish? 120 and even more torque. And even more torque, yeah. So torque was actually, I want to say 160. Wow. So you're talking like definitely you can feel it. Oh, yeah. And that's just over two grand, I think, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's not a bad deal at all. No. And no. it's totally safe and everything. It's okay. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't we, know. We keep our tunes relatively safe. I know there is other companies out there that advertise maybe a little more power than what we do, but they're really leaning on the products. So to where you're kind of borderline being unsafe. Right, right. all our stuff totally safe. It's going to be reliable. We've got trucks out there with over 100,000 miles on them that came in day one and had our tune, cold air, and eventually upgrading the exhaust on them. And they're running around all over the United States. Wow. That's awesome. So basically today, I walked into Livernoy Motorsports and, and Engineering today and was like, hey, can I film? Uh, can you guys give me a shop tour? And the sales manager, Scott, was very helpful and he was just like, yeah, you can film. I'll take you on a tour around the shop. So uh, thank you for doing that, Scott. Uh, appreciate it. So and definitely I'm going to be bringing my uh, 3.5 liter EcoBoost there when I get the 2018 I'm a special order one. And I'm probably going to take a couple hundred miles just to break it in, but as soon as uh, it's broken in, I'm going to be bringing it in. So let me, let me know what you guys think. Should I get the 3.5, the 5.0, or the 2.7? I'm kind of leaning toward the 3.5 because it's the most tunable engine and there's the most that you can do to that engine, but uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, thank you for watching. My name's Sean. Thank you for watching Donna Sean. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please, please subscribe. There's going to be more to come. I'm going to be ordering a 2018 F-150. And uh, I want to bring you guys along for that for that with me. And we'll see how that all goes. So thank you for watching. And uh, hope to see you again soon. Have a good day. Bye.